Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we are going to be going in a new direction by reviewing Altenews dies and their 3D dies. If you've never shopped Altenews products, they have some beautiful products. They're most famously known for their build a flower kits, but they also have stencils, inks, sprays, and more. So today we are focusing on their dies. This first one is a layering die, which gives you the same look of a cutting machine without having the expensive cutting machine. And this one is a fan called Fantasy Floral. We also have three word dies in the Simply Word die collection. We've got Thank You, Hello, and Friend. All right, so our first card we're going to make is going to be in a neutral tone. So I got some Nina cardstock and also some Nina vellum. And I have a polka dot one in that. And I've cut a bunch of beautiful little layers here. My first layer is going to be, for the flower, is going to be the polka dot vellum. Cut out in the first big layer die. And this other one is going to be in their cream pearl paper. And I did the same color for the top layer of the flower too. Because even though they're the same colors, they're going to have that 3D effect. I also cut out two hearts with the stitched heart dies from Cottage Cuts and I've layered them on top of each other. And I also have this beautiful tan color cardstock that is going to be the leaves. And I cut out a hello in some copper glitter and I have a strip of copper glitter left over that I'm going to use on the other side of my card. Now I'm going to adhere all this with my Nouveau glue pen because this can take a little longer to dry. So I'm going to do it. Plus you get that fine details that you need for these layers because there are some parts of it that are not very precise that you can actually put a little bit more glue. But I love the control you get with the ball point tip on that because then you can even get as little as a little thin droplet, which is really helpful for these smaller parts. And for these, I'm just going to dab little dots of it because you know what? I'm not going to be able to get the long, precise lines that I need in this little part. So now I'm going to layer these stacks. So you can line them up by that little notch in the little flower there. And they line up perfectly on top of each other. Isn't that pretty? So we'll let that dry. Now that we have let that dry a little bit, we are going to go into making our card. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape roller on the back of this little, I think it's a silver pearl part, and then I'm going to put it on top of the vellum. And then I'm going to top that underneath it. Like I said, always hide your adhesive under your vellum. Vellum is a tricky paper sometimes to use, and if you don't adhere it right, you can see your glue through it. So it's always a good tip to try to camouflage it. And the perfect way to camouflage it so that this vellum is floating is to put it underneath the other cardstock heart. So always try to find a way. There's usually a, some sort of way to camouflage it, whether it be a little heart to cover the glue spot, or something, but always try to camouflage it, that we get that flawless look. So I'm going to stick that right on top, and as you see, it's almost floating. So I think I'm going to put, end up putting it over there more instead. I was going to put it on the other side, but I think there's going to be too much of that vellum together. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue to glue my leaf on. A little droplet more on the other side that way it holds it. And once again, I'm trying to camouflage my glue behind the spots that you're not going to see it. And there we have these beautiful little flower petals on there. So we are now going to adhere this on there, and I'm going to use a little bit of scotch adhesive on the back, but then I'm going to leave it floating on the top. So we're going to use roller on the top and then the scotch squares on the bottom so that it kind of slides on top of the part that is lifted. All right, so put some roller tape on that. 
get the other backer off. And that way it's not too warped. And there we go. So now for the hello. And I just think this glitter paper is so pretty. It is actually a coppery color, which is very pretty with the browns and the neutrals that are in this card. So once again, I'm going to go over with my Nuvo glue. And we're just going to leave a nice line along this. Down there, there we go. So a little trick that I like to do when I use glue is I use my plates from my Cricut because it gets a nice even disbursement of the weight and it holds down the glue while it's drying. So while we're waiting for it to dry, I'm gonna put a strip of the same copper glitter paper right on this card form so that we have a little bit of a matching strip of it. And there we go. So now I feel like it's set down enough that I can actually now put this panel on the card. And I cut this so that it would exactly fit this whole panel. But I did give myself a little overlap so that I could cut it down if it felt it was a little too long. So right now I'm trying to get this on there straight. It's not on straight, so let me pull it off a little bit. Clay, I hadn't pushed down all the way yet. There we go. So I'm going to trim off any excess I have because like I said, I did make it a little bigger than the card form because it's always easier to, easy to cut down than it is to cut up. So little trick, if you cut it a little smidgen bigger than you need, it's not a big deal. So you can always trim it down. And you can see the little details in the 3D effect of that flower, even with the monotone. So I see a little areas where I didn't stick right, so I'm just gonna put a little pin drop of glue. And then I'm gonna once again use my Cricut mat. So to embellish this card, I'm gonna use some of the five millimeter gold glitter sequins that we have in the store. And they are flat, so they're not that cup shape that a typical sequin to have. So they have a beautiful glitter. I think it's going to be perfect. Even though it's not the same copper as in the paper, it still goes with that almost neutral tone that we have going on and also has a little bit of the glitter. So I'm going to use my pick em up tool and pick up these little sequins and apply them to the card. Apparently this dot of glue has already dried. So let me grab another daub. There is card number one. For our second card, I once again have pre-cut a bunch of different colors of the flowers and leaves. And I've made three of each, three in the purples and three in the pinks. And this is a way to show you how to use the solid colors if you do not have the vellum and the pearl papers. So usually the trick is you go lighter to darker with your layers, being the darkest color is the smallest part. So you can either use this Nuva glue or like I just showed, you can even use the two-way glue or any kind of glue pen that you feel. The only thing I feel with these layers is I don't want it to stay tacky. I want it to adhere right away. So I'm using the Nuva for that because it doesn't stay tacky when it dries. It kind of just becomes a permanent hold. So like I said before, you line the little notches and layer it up. And you just keep on adding your cute little layers. I'm gonna do one of each color of these flowers that we can see the colors together. And then we'll skip back to when all of them are made. So I am just doing little droplets of glue. You don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. And once again, I'm going to take out my Cricut mat, but I might not need to. They seem to be holding pretty good without it. 
Depending on the thickness of your paper, sometimes they stick a little bit better. And these are a nice medium weight paper, so they tend to be a little less warped, or they don't stick up a little more. They kind of stick together well. So once again, we're going to do a little droplets of glue everywhere here for this purple flower. Altogether, I'm going to make about five cards. This video is, of course, going to be a little bit longer because of that. So if, I'm sorry if the length is long for you guys, but I want to show you as much as I can that you can do with these. That way you can see all the possibilities. I'm going to make five cards with just this little die set. And on Altenew, it retails about $15, so it's not really the expensive one. They do have some that are bigger. They're more in the 40s, but they also have some like this one that you can get for $15. All right, so I have got all of my little flowers built, and I cut the thank you out of white paper. And all this is being made with the Nina cardstock, and we're just going to go in here. I usually love the Nina cardstock. Sometimes I do use some of the Recollections colors too, um, but I do love the weight of Nina cardstock. It is just a nice weight, and usually I get the, I believe it's 65, so it's a nice medium weight versus the 80 and smaller weights because I just like the weight of it. They stick better, they don't. They don't seem ultra thick, they're just the perfect weight. So I'm gonna put a bunch of leaves on these and I'm just using my Elmer's roller just to get a little line of glue, just to stick the leaves on and I'll add more glue when I get the leaves all put together. And I'm trying to alternate them between the dark and light greens so that way we have more texture to the color. Right, so we're going to put all these staggered on a white cardstock panel. I have the extra flower up there. I was planning not on using it originally, but I think I might end up tying it in towards the end. I'm just going to see how everything fits first, and if it fits good, I will use it. It all depends on how these layer. Yeah, I might use I'm going to use it because I kind of want to make it. I was originally thinking of doing six. All right, so I'm going to tuck this one underneath this leaf because I want the leaf to show. And then I'm going to put that one, but I think I might steal that leaf off of there. Sometimes your first initial layout doesn't work, so you just do it again. Let me just tie that down. I think I got them all laid out. I'll just tuck this little leaf underneath this last pink flower just to give it a little balance of color. Look at that beautiful bunch of flowers. Now I'm going to top it with this thank you. And for the thank you, I'm going to 3D mount that with some Scotch adhesive squares. And I know you're going, why? It's going to be so time consuming to do that fine thing. Yes, I know, but it does give me a beautiful effect towards the end. Sometimes the most beautiful effects take the most time. And of course, I will speed this up for you guys so you don't sit there watching me put little tiny strips of adhesive on a word. Um, but it does give you a beautiful effect. You can also same effect if you have cut multiple of the same die cut word and stack them upon each other. You will also get a nice even design. So definitely a great way to do that same kind of technique. Because stacked words are very nice, especially when you have a word like this. 
when I ordered these, I really thought these were going to be smaller word dies, but I have to say they are really a good size. They also have the mega words, which are huge. So great options for you. Because I thought, oh, they're simple ones, so they must be like the smaller ones. But these are good size word dies. They're almost the size of my hand, which is alone a really good size. So I was very impressed with it. And these you can get for multiple prices depending on where you buy them. Sometimes you can get them somewhere with a coupon. Like I got mine from Blitzy. And they ended up being quite inexpensive because I had a couple coupons. So a great way to get wonderful name brand products for a good deal. So now we're going to pull off all these little tiny little strips of green scotch backing. And we're going to add this once we're done on top of these flower bunches. And it just pops because you got the color and then you got that beautiful bright white on top. So now I'm going to put this on top of a beautiful multicolor stripe card form. So fun little card. Now to embellish this, I'm not going to use any rhinestones or sequins. I'm just going to add some little drops of some enamel to give them almost little dew drops. I'm just going to go around. And this is my Hero Arts lacquer pen. I think it's going to be very pretty once it's all done. And there you go. All right, for our third card, we are going to make a little acetate window card. And what's really cool is you frame it out into, underneath two panels with a heart cut out in the center. And I'm doing this in a very monotone color. We're gonna have some silver glitter and a bunch of layers in just plain white. So great way is if you don't have a large scale of colors to make some fun use of this. All right, so one thing I love about this Tim Holtz mat is you have this cling non-stick mat. And yes, they usually show it stuck to the white part of our mat, which is on the far end. But what's nice about this cling is you can cling it wherever you want on your glass mat. So in this case, I want this to be visible so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to bring it to you. But you can put your, literally your nonstick wherever you want and just move it around. But to keep my work surface nice and clean, I'm deciding to do this because we are going to be dealing with white. And white, I hate to say it, is a collect all of everything. So as you see, I'm doing the same thing I did before with the colors, but just in the white. And you can sort of see the 3D details in this white, but it's very, very smooth and different. So I'm gonna just do my roller instead of doing it on this bigger layer because it really doesn't matter. And the trick is if you get a little adhesive in those holes, just take a pick, like I'm using my tooling one, and you can pull down the adhesive a little bit from the roller, and it actually leaves the holes empty. Little trick. So there's our line there, and I'm gonna save my glue for the thin layer where I need that detail and that precision, because it's very hard to put a roller over such fine details. All right. So here is that one, and I think we're got enough glue on it. Let me 
line that up again. That little layer. Now you're like, a window card sounds like it can be a challenge. If you do it correctly, it actually is quite easy. So basically what you're going to do is take two panels of the front of your card, cut a hole in them, and then you sandwich. So first thing I'm going to do is cut my first little piece of Judy Ken's acetate, and I'm going to put it on the back side of this heart cutout. Nina Pearl cardstock. And I'm going to take off, they give you a little layer on there. Now I'm going to put a little edge of glue on each side here just to cover the, stick it to the little window. Have that perfect alignment before I put the adhesive on. Do that. And as you see through the window, you see this beautiful 3D flower in there, like it's pressed between the window. Now I'm going to put my little leaves on there. And then I'm going to take another piece of acetate and stick it on the back. And that makes my cute little window. Now the trick is, is you're going to take a, another card form and you're going to cut off majority of the front panel and then you're gonna stick it. So I left about probably about a half of an inch on there. You can go smaller. And now I'm just gonna sandwich that in between the two panels. And that is gonna give me the illusion of having a window card. So very fun technique and very easy to build and construct. And you can do this in any color, which is really fun. I did white on pearl. That way it was white inside with the pearl just on the top. Now I'm going to add the word in silver glitter, friend, because I just think this is so pretty. You could, this would have been a beautiful also wedding card if you have a bride in the family. Love card. Very pretty. So I'm going to use my clear in that. But then I just realized I left the dot off the friend. So let me add a little dab of glue and add that little dot because there is a little dot that comes with this die so that you get the full friend. And there it is all dry. And isn't that pretty? Clear acetate going right into the card itself. Now to embellish this card, I am going to use my silver glitter flat sequins and they're also in a five millimeter and they're just perfect with this glitter cardstock friend so very monotone but very very classy like i said perfect for a wedding card perfect for a sympathy card but look at that isn't that fun all right and going back into the monotone, I did a lot of monotone in this. I am going to make a black, white, and gray card. So I'm taking some Hero Art Silver Sparkle embossing powder. And what I'm going to do is show you how to layer embossing powders to make your own custom embossed paper. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep on layering direct ink on paper and then emboss it like crazy. And you may have to do up to four to five layers. You're gonna decide when you've had enough, when you get the perfect consistency that you want. But this is a perfect way to match your paper to any embossing you might have for sentiments. And you get some custom colors, because honestly, between me and you, there are some beautiful colors of embossing patterns out there. So the more you can make use of it, it's better. So we're gonna keep on going. Like I said, it, sometimes it takes four, sometimes it takes five. And the more opaque or smooth the powder finish, 
the more smoother. This one has glitter in it, so I do expect it to have that chunky pattern, but you can see how pretty that is. But if you want it smoother, you can keep on adding layers. So I die cut those out into leaves and the word thank you. And I did realize after looking at this that I actually have my mat kind of crooked. That doesn't matter. We're just gonna do our layers of our flowers and I chose very simple colors for this one because I wanted it to be very monotone and classy. So I have this beautiful silver glitter again and then I have a beautiful almost gray pewter colored pearl that we're gonna use for the top layer. So once again, in the monotones, some dabs of that onto that. And this one will definitely require me to put my cutting mat on there because you're sticking that pearl on that glitter. So that will hold it down while it's drying and I will get an even kind of sit to it. Versus if I put something heavy on my curl up in one section, this gives me a precise thing. So another way to use your mats, if you have a cutting machine, either with your Sizzix or any of them, you can sometimes use it as weight. Like I find my C plate to be a perfect weight because it's the thicker of, well, second thickest plate that I have. But they do, they work for wonderful even weights too. So you kind of get like a pressed flower look right here. All right, so now that they're dry and they're adhered well, we're going to add the boss leaves and thank you. So I am going to add some glue to this thank you first. And for this one, I'm going to actually use my two-way glue because it actually gives me some room for reapplying. Should, for some reason, this thank you go on too crooked. I think I'm going to be able to get this on, hopefully straight. So I'm going to just lay down my Y and then tilt. And then once again, pull up my trusty mat while I adhere some leaves to this. And while I have it here, I'm going to just lay them out and figure out where I want to put my flowers. So I'm going to hear my little leaves. So there's one. There's two. And our last flower. One more leaf. Let me put that on there too. There we go. So I was sort of going to do a mock layout while I was waiting for my thank you to dry. So I'm going to add some adhesive to this leaf and the flower. Stick that down. So this one I'm going to 3D mount because I want some dimension to this card. I don't want it to be multi-dimensional. I want it to be multi-dimensional, not flat, because I'm doing this right onto the card itself. So there's no panel that I can elevate, so I might as well elevate my flowers. And I noticed I have a little bit that lifted up, so I'm just going to push that down. And then I'll weight it down for a little bit. Sometimes you get those curl ups, and I don't want that to curl up on me.
I don't know what kind of flowers this fantasy floral has in it. Um, but it is a beautiful flower. For years, I've done this technique with my Cricut. And it's great, but sometimes you don't want to have to open up your computer and dig out a design just to make a flower. It's kind of a nice, simple, easy way to just take out your your Sizzix or your Big Shot or whatever manual die cutting machine you have. Even some new Geminis are nice that you can just go in there and go wild. Trim that little leaf off a little bit too so it's flat. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? So once again, I'm going to take the Silver Glare. But use any cutting machine you have. They even have their own via Altenute. They have a little mini one that is very cute and portable. So definitely a fun way, especially if you don't want to buy a big cutting machine. I mean, sometimes us crafters, we just don't do enough die cutting to worry about it. And there you go. Isn't that pretty? It's very monotone once again, but look at that fun emboss look you have. All right, like I promised, there is some color in this video. So we are going to play with some distressed oxides now. And we are going to do some fun shimmer smooshing with some colors. And I'm going to use some iridescent watercolor that I have from Hero Arts. And I am going to ink smoosh with this distressed oxides with the glitter shimmer. So you get this kind of matte shimmer look, which is really pretty. It's a lot better than the glossiness you get with some of the other inks, and it's really fun. So I'm going to heat set this a little bit. That way we're not having anything sticking out. And it also speeds up our drying process. Because I also want to add some more layers of color to this. So I'm going to add some more. And I'm using fossilized amber. Spiced marmalade, and I'm now adding fired brick. And I'm going to make some little flower panels now. So I'm going to have all this for my die cuts. So I'm putting some pretty colors together because I want some yellow flowers and I want some pink and purple flowers for this card. So once again, I'm going to come in with my three colors that way I can get a second layer of this ink on there. And kind of smush it in there and get some more brightness in there. Make sure I get a good consistency all over my paper. Isn't that fun? I love ink smushing. You get this fun watercolor look without having to do all the work of watercoloring it. Because, I mean, you could do this in watercolor and do it that way. So now I'm doing Wilted Violet, Worn Lipstick, and the Fired Brick together to get my kind of pinky purple look. Isn't that pretty? Already it looks gorgeous. I don't even know if I'm going to do a second grouping of this because I think it just came out perfect already. Alright, so wipe that clean and now I'm going to do Crack Pistachio, Mowed Lawn, and some Ice Spruce for my leaf paper. And we're just going to lay that out and make a pretty green. Alright. So quick ink smushing, but it's never, ink smushing is so much fun. It's messy, but it's so much fun. If you haven't ever done it, you get a different look with every smush. And it's just such a pretty little abstract, kind of non-controlled way to use your inks. And you get some beautiful results. All right, so now I'm going to take three of my primary colors here. I'm going to use Wilted Violet, uh, Warm Lipstick, and the Cracked Pistachio, and go back over that yellow piece that I had done earlier because I want to add some more color to it so that all the colors that are in the flowers are also going to be in the word. So now I'm taking some, looks like, the spiced marmalade and I'm going to speckle it onto this card panel and I'm sorry that you're off screen. There we go. A little bit better now. I'm trying to get you on screen without getting my paper in the ink either. So now I'm going to take some wilted violet, 
warm lipstick and the fired brick and I'm going to go back over and add some more colored speckles. And then just taking a bristle brush and just adding some speckles of color. So now that everything's dry, I've cut everything out and I'm getting my trusty Cricut panel here to do my adhering. So as I'm adhering these pieces with glue, I'm going to stick them underneath. That way, like I said, they stay weighted down as we glue it on there. So that one I decided not to do the liquid glue, so I just used some roll-on adhesive so that I didn't need to use the weight. But now I'm going to use some more glue and add this. And I tried to alternate the yellow and the pink on two of them. And then the other one, I am going to add layers of yellow on yellow. On top that way, oops, that didn't get very straight. Let me make sure we're straight before I lay it down. And then for our last one, I'm going to add the last layer. So once again, a very fun way to use products that you have with these dyes and make beautiful cards with it. I'm going to let those dry. And while that's happening, we are going to start thinking about our leaves. So let's grab our first flower. And get my hello up here. See that hello is going to be just beautiful on there. So let me put my panel first before I start layering onto my card form. And I've used just a basic white card form. And I'm going to put some craft foam behind this one. And I'm going to attach it to a basic white card form. And this is on Canson water paper, watercolor paper for the f flowers and the word. Because I felt that with the technique we were using, we needed that. And you can see that sheen every once in a while when I know you almost get like a pearlescent sheen, which is very pretty with that iridescent. watercolor additive. It is so pretty. I don't know if you're going to see it on the screen, but it's so pretty in person. It just gives it this pearlescent sheen. It's a very vintage pearl. This is a case where the camera does it no justice. In person, it's just going to be so much more prettier. So we're going to attach these flowers now. So let me grab that. And get them on there. I'm going to figure out my layout here. So I'm just going to put some roller adhesive on this. And line it up. We'll just layer our leaves and everything on top, and it's okay if it goes over the panel a little bit. And I'm going to add some Scotch adhesive squares to the bottom and leave the top with just roller. That way we get that balanced kind of look to it. Isn't that fun? All right, and once again, I'm going to put adhesive behind our word because I want this word hello to pop. And like I said, you can stack it if you like to cut multiples and glue them together. And you get a nice evenly raised look. I find, i seen that technique and I love it. But it's just, I'm too messy of a person to do it apparently. I can never line them up right. For some reason I do better trying to cut foam adhesive. So either way works. But a great way to get the same 3D look. Now I'm going to bring out some of my transparent gems. I'm using the yellow and the champagne. 
and I love these because they're beautiful, clear, transparent, and they don't have a foil backing so that they almost look like they're dewdrops. Colored dewdrops, they're just so pretty. And whatever color you have behind it shows through. So you can see the green behind it, you can see the white, depending on where you put it, you can see it through because they're absolutely transparent. They're extremely hard to find too. Which I love. I love the things that I can't find regularly. And that's why I love bringing it to you guys. Things that you can't just go find at the local craft store. They're unique and fun. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? Very soft but floral. And that's what you can do with these dies. You can have fun with them. And you can make beautiful cards no matter what you do. And I hope this helped you find some fun uses to do with your 3D dies. And introduce you to the wonders of the Ulta New 3D Flower dies. So thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please check out the last uploaded video. As well as one specially curated just for you. And like always, I welcome you to like, subscribe, and ring for notifications with this icon. And check out our website as well as our Facebook and Instagram pages.